Hello, I'm Professor Lou. Welcome to our live stream. Today, I'm going to be sculpting a figure on a small scale. If you would like to grow as an artist and you can't afford an art class, we've got everything you need here at Art Prof, critiques, tutorials, and professional development. We are going to be working fairly small today, and I'm going to be using plastiline, which is oil-based clay, meaning that it never dries out. And for reference, we are going to be using these Robert Maplethorpe photos, and the links to those images are in the YouTube video description below. And I would love it if you guys feel that you want to sculpt along with me, you can draw along with me, you can work on another project, totally up to you guys how you want to do that. What I have here is a piece of plywood and it's actually on top a Lazy Susan. This is so handy when you're doing a 3D figure to be able to move it around. And so that's a really great tool to have. And you guys will see in the photo that the figure is sitting on top of this pedestal. So this is just like a ketchup condiment <laughs> container. And so I'm just gonna put it here and that way I don't have to use up as much clay. You can if you want, but I think it's a little bit nicer if you don't have to deal with that. So what I'm gonna do is take these pieces of clay and I'm just gonna put it around the side so that way the plastiline holds it into place. This point, because I'm not gonna use any glue to hold this down, you have to like really press, you have to put pressure on the side because if I just throw this on and I don't press hard, this plastic container is gonna fall right off. And so this is pretty important and that way it doesn't fall off. The plastic is pretty stiff clay, so you guys probably will not have an issue with this. With a figure that is this small, you don't generally have as many structural problems, which is one of the reasons why it's nice to work on a small scale. We don't need an armature. The pose is pretty straightforward. It doesn't have any like limbs going out in different directions. All right, so you guys can see now this is pretty solid. Like if I try to move this, it's not going to go anywhere. And so this is totally fine as a place to get started. Okay, what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to take my pieces of plastiline. I just want to cover this because obviously you don't want any of the plastic container to be showing. So it actually works better if you build up like this. And Tell me in the chat, who's going to sculpt with me? Who's gonna draw with me? Who's got another project that they're working on? And Carrie Ann says, bonjour, no clay today, but I did look into making sand clay, priming myself up. Oh, you know what one of my favorite clays is to work with is you can get terracotta ceramic clay that has, grog in it and so it has this like grit i guess grog is sort of like sand and oh man you guys that clay it feels so good <laughs> plastiline by comparison is very smooth and so you don't have that like push and pull of the surface but Oh, I love that clay. I really don't get to use it though because it's ceramic clay. And so because it's water-based, it makes it so that you don't really have the opportunity to work with it at home, especially because you get like all this powder and it's not good for you. So I don't generally get to do that. Plastiline is so good for a home studio. You don't have to worry about it drying, there's no dust. So while it's not my favorite clay, I think the practicality of using it is so useful that for me it like overrides <laughs> the fact that it's not my favorite clay all right let's see what people are saying 
May May says it's 1 a.m. in my place, but who needs sleep when Art Drop is live? <laughs> you know, I couldn't sleep last night either. I posted something on Instagram. I was trying to go to bed because I've been trying to be better about not sleeping too late, and I could not sleep. And so I think around 12.30, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to draw for a little bit. So actually what I decided to do was a sketch based on some of the drawing techniques that Kathy Speranza taught me. And we just released this tutorial a few days ago. So I hope you guys will check out that tutorial. And I wouldn't say that I slept great, <laughs> but I definitely was more productive than if I had just been sitting there in bed trying to sleep, which is of course so frustrating. I mean, I've never been a good sleeper. I'm somebody who wakes up in two seconds if there's like a mouse squeaking. So I'm, I'm just not great in that department in general. Very cool. Learn Cat says I live in Ireland, never get to live. So glad I got to be here. Well, I'm so happy that you're here too, Learn Cat. Tell me in the chat who is here for the first time, who here hasn't gotten here as much as they'd like to. I know we got a lot of regulars. So thank you so much for joining us. Auntie M says, can I be depressed with you? Sure, <laughs> that's fine. I mean, whatever mood you guys are in, doesn't matter. You don't have to be happy to hang out with me, it's fine. <laughs> Scott says, hello, it's been a while since I've had classes, but I'm ready to learn. Great. I, I just love how you guys are so enthusiastic about things. It's just the enthusiasm. I don't have to worry about that. Like sometimes when I've taught in classes, you get students, oh, I don't want to be here. Or, I'm taking this class because it's required. And it's not a problem when you teach online because people are here because they really want to be here. They're not here for a grade. They're not here to get credit. It's really refreshing. Okay, so as everybody see, that's my little pedestal. So now let's build the structure of the figure. I don't wanna get too big though, because the thing is once I get past a certain height, I'm gonna have structural problems. The pose helps because the pose is very enclosed. It's gonna make it easier for me structurally, but still I have to be careful I don't get too big. So this is one thing that I do. If you guys have time, I make little noodles, <laughs> these are great. If I had time, I would have like a little noodle factory. <laughs> I'd have an assistant here just to make me clay noodles because these are really, really easy to sculpt with. Like if anything, you guys wanna have clay that's like this. Clay that's like little bits because it's easier. Like if you guys have a big hunk of clay like this, like this is horrible to sculpt with because it's impossible. So what I always do is I take my knife, this is a pretty good clay knife, and if I have big chunks, I just take them and I cut them up into little pieces like this. And now here is the magic of sculpture, look at this. I have a hair dryer, and what I do is I just put the hair dryer on the clay to soften it up, and it's awesome because plastiline is terrible when it's hard. And so when you put the hair dryer on, it's great. So I'll show you guys how to do that. All right, and now I have all these pieces of clay, but oh my God, they're so soft. <laughs> it feels really good. Guys, I need this. It's been stressful lately. <laughs> so this is great. Now it clay is so soft. And now it's a lot easier to sculpt with. So I recommend getting the hair dryer. It makes a really big difference. I mean, it depends on the plastiline you have. Some plastiline is horrible. Some of it is like a rock. There's one brand called Roma. It's like a brick. I mean, you need like a laser cutter to get through that stuff. The stuff that I'm using is called Protolina. And I like it because it's not too sticky. There's a lot of plastiline brands. They're really sticky and they just feel gross on your hands. And this one's not amazing, but it's better than a lot of the other brands that I've used in the past. Okay, let's see. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now, 
I'm going to start with the side view. And you guys, isn't it amazing that Robert Maplethorpe shot these three views just for me? I mean, it's like he was reading my mind because I don't have access to models right now. So obviously I'm not able to shoot reference photos or anything like that. And so when I saw these Robert Maplethorpe images, I was like, oh my God, this is exactly what I need. <laughs> like Three views of the same pose, super high res of a nude figure. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> okay, I know it looks like blobby, but you gotta start somewhere, guys. <laughs> Sometimes I work on this stuff, I'm like, I feel like a toddler. <laughs> but what I'm doing is I'm just building up the basic form of this is like the back and then here's the thigh and the beginning part it's just it's all grunt work and i guess i'm sort of doing like a contour i mean in the beginning you're just building up a mass you're not really trying to do anything except just put the form there so i'm just going to connect this head so you guys can see even there, even though it's totally flat, at the very least, that gives me the silhouette of what's going on. I might go more squinting. I don't know, I might go a little bigger, we'll see. This is a pretty easy pose from a structure point of view. Like I'm not worried about limbs sticking out and getting in the way. I tend to not do the arms in the beginning. The arms are sort of the last part of the limb you do because they really do get in the way of building the torso. Okay. Let's try that. All right, and now that I have that, I'm gonna immediately go to the back view, okay? Because you don't wanna stay on one view for too long. That's the issue with 3D is a lot of people tend to build things side by side, like now I'm doing the back, now I'm doing the front. You can't do that. You have to move sides pretty often. And that is really, really helpful, you guys. So try when you sculpt. Don't stay on one view for too long because that will end up making your sculpture feel very flat. This is a lot of pinching in the beginning. Actually, not a lot of work with tools because right now we're just trying to build mass. It's very similar to what I tell you guys about with anatomy, that you need the mass to build the anatomy. Okay. Whoa, that looks terrible. <laughs> awesome. I love it. Oh, wonky. We were talking about claymation and how, like, how wonky a lot of that old school claymation is. <laughs> I'm like, yep, I'm making Gumby right now. <laughs> okay, let's go over to the front view. All right, and on the front view, let's see. Probably, oh, this is so weird looking. You know, I'm going to sit over here and then maybe you guys can see this a little bit better from that point of view. I sit here. Okay, there we go. We're squinting. It's hard in the beginning because you're, you're just working with nothing. And so it really feels like not a lot is going on, but you got to start somewhere. Okay. Ugh. I mean, in some ways, this is harder than not having an armature, because when you have an armature, you actually have something to hold things up. This is actually a lot trickier because I don't have the guide of the armature to keep me going. But in some ways, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Okay. There. Looks great. Hi, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Who else has a massive bleh in front of them? That's exactly what I have. 
Vanessa says, my placeline feels like when you have just done a lot of greasy dishes and your hand is ew, but hey, the things we do for art. <laughs> That's one of the less strange things that I think a lot of us do. Sylvian says, glad I made it to the stream. Have it muted while it's playing because I'm in history class. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure I should uh, encourage that. But if it helps you pay attention, I mean, whatever works. Lauren Cat is asking, are you working on a smaller scale so you don't have to use an armature? That's part of it. But also the thing about sculpture is once you get over 12 inches, it takes so much longer to make. It takes a crazy amount of clay. Stuff starts to get very heavy. And I mean, it would take me like 12 streams to finish, which would be insane. I don't think you guys will watch that. So the smaller scale, it's just more manageable. Sculpture is one of those things like stuff just gets so complicated after a while. Mayme is asking, armatures are the wire things, right? Yes. And in fact, if you guys go to our playlists on 3D tutorials, we do have this one where I do a figure armature and I put air dry clay on top of it. And we also have this one, which is a portrait sculpture. And this one also has an armature. It's a different type of armature, obviously, because it's a bust. But if you guys want to learn how to do that, go watch these two tutorials because the armature is really, really handy, you guys. It's great to have that. Let's see. Iona says, I'm doing my history homework, but this looks a lot more interesting. Well, I think a lot of people tell me that they really like working with our streams going and that that's great. I mean, if that works for you and it helps you guys go, then terrific. Okay, uh, let's see. Actually, I need to flip this image because I didn't include the other view. So let me just, I wonder if I can flip it. Let's see, rotate, no, if I can do that in here, I might have to do it in Photoshop. Okay, go in, I'm just gonna start building some of this stuff over here. Let's just bulk up some of that torso. See, it's like even this, it looks small, but even now I'm looking at it going, oh, Claire, you're going too big. <laughs> That's the thing in sculpture and printmaking, it really is a matter of scale. Like in drawing, it doesn't matter. If you draw big, if you paint big, yeah, I mean, it's pricier for sure if you paint big. But the thing is, it's not the same thing in terms of labor. Like those of you guys who here has done printmaking, if you do a print that's like 18 by 24, that's like ginormous. That's so big for a print, especially if you're doing something like intaglio, which is very, um, time consuming in terms of the structure. Okay. Oh my God, this looks, <laughs> you guys probably think I don't know what I'm doing. It's okay, I don't care. <laughs> it's funny because I was thinking, because we released that tutorial with Kathy Speranza, I was thinking to myself that, wow, it's really nice to have like a masterful tutorial where somebody is just so immensely graceful and doing such amazing work. But then we have tutorials like this where you're just making a mound of stuff. It's like, OK, you need both. You need a balance. You need the people who are like masterful. And then you need this, which is like a big pile of that, for lack of a better word. OK, oh, I guess I should have put the camera on my side. Sorry about that. Anyway, I hope you guys can still sort of see what I'm doing. Okay. Yeah, I have like mega bad insomnia. Like I was not doing well last night. I still have not really found a way around it. I mean, it's really, and it's hard because Everybody else in my family falls asleep in like 30 seconds and it just makes me mad. <laughs> like, it's just not fair that they can fall asleep so quickly. <laughs> okay. 
Do you guys notice how I'm doing this during the day because I have natural light on the figure. And that's a really big difference. I would recommend you guys, anytime you work three-dimensionally, use light from a window because you see how soft the shadows are? Like you can really see the form very visibly. And if I had a spotlight on this, this would actually be very, very difficult to do. Looks like James has started with clay. Awesome. Can't wait to see what you guys are making. I hope you will join me in the Discord later so I can see what you guys made. James says that they are making a tree. Cool. Selvian says, where is a good place to find images of people posing for sculptures like the one you have, which shows the front, the back, and the side? Honestly, Selvian, I don't know. I mean, I know there's all of those sites that have figure images, but I think most of those are for drawing. I don't know that they have ones that are all several views. I mean, I'll tell you, the second that the pandemic is over and I can get models, I will be on that. But right now we just can't get that. But yeah, it's, it's hard. It's really difficult to get references for 3D because just a lot of people just don't think about that. Most people are thinking about figure drawing. And so it's a very different situation. <clears throat> okay, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to open Photoshop and get another view because I didn't do the other view. So let me just grab this. Talk amongst yourselves. Let's see. I'll give you guys a topic. Harry and Meghan, who here watched the Oprah interview? I mean, I don't know. I feel like that was blast from the past because they were saying actually that a lot of people don't do those long form interviews anymore like those used to be a really big thing in like the 90s and stuff like that but that actually people don't do that anymore because everything is so different and so it was this like moment i guess for a lot of the journalists to be like wow we don't really see this that often anymore but yeah i watched little clips of it and oh i just feel so bad for them Okay, let me just put this photo into the folder so I can access it really quickly. Okay, I don't know, maybe it's different if you didn't grow up with the Princess Diana thing, but I mean, I just felt so bad for them and all the stuff that people put them through, it's really, really sad all right so now i have flipped my image and now i have this view which is the one that i am looking for okay cool may may says i've always wanted to try printmaking but linoleum is so expensive in my place oh yeah i mean depending on where you live certain art supplies are just impossible to get Oh, Carrie Ann says the Met has views of statues you can use. That's great. Yeah, sometimes you can model from like an ancient Greek sculpture. Like you don't always have to do a photo. It can be something else. Anna says, I make big oil paintings six feet. I love making big ceramic sculptures, but it gets so, so heavy and hard to store. Oh, I, I feel you on that, Anna. I mean, I don't know how people are professional sculptors. It is so much work to store, to pack. It, it's crazy. Angie says, I blocked a lot of people on Facebook because I saw some pretty bigoted comments regarding Harry and Meghan. So terrible. I feel so bad for them. I mean, oh gosh. I mean, poor Harry. Can you imagine what this is like for him? Like what was going through? I mean, he must just feel like history is repeating itself. It must just be like the most upsetting thing. I mean, can you imagine? Like, I mean, he was probably, I think Harry was like 11 when his mother died. I mean, that was so, so terrible. Oh my God. Oh my gosh. That like, that level of public scrutiny is just, it's so scary. I mean, I know a lot of people say things like, oh, well, they're rich. Who cares? And I'm like, at a certain point, it doesn't matter how rich you are you can still be leading a very difficult, challenging life. And I, 
I just don't know that it's fair to say that, oh, because they're rich, they've got it made. I mean, I, I don't think that's true at all. I mean, yes, I mean, money certainly does make a difference. I mean, if you have enough to eat and enough to live on and stuff, but being rich does not guarantee happiness, that's for sure. Okay, so what I want to do now that I have something blocked in, I'm going to try to get the arch of the body. So I'm going to just do this. This, this. this is where it starts to look a little gross, but I'm going to just take the figure and I'm going to just push it back, okay? Like this. I'm going to pull the body back. Oops, <laughs> and apparently decapitate my figure <laughs> and pull the head forward. But it's like, th this is what you have to be willing to do with sculpture. You have to be willing to make these like severe changes because yes, I'm building up the form, but I don't know if you guys notice I'm keeping it really, really rough and loose on purpose because then I'm not as likely to try to like hang on to things. And what I'm going to try to do now is to build in planes. So does everybody see? I just took my knife. Actually, let me zoom out a little bit so you guys can see a little bit better. Okay. So this is like the plane up here of the neck. And I want to get more of a plane. Let's see, maybe I'll use, I guess I'll use this. I'm going to get like the plane of the back. And then you see down here, it kind of comes down. Does everyone see that? So it's like the plane of the neck. This is like the top of the upper torso. This is the lower section of the torso. Okay, so or already here, you can see these flat planes. But it's like you have to start with that to get the sculpture to really work. Okay, and now you can see, I mean, definitely there's not enough fine here. But I do think it's really helpful with sculpture to not smooth anything out and keep things really, really rough because you're more likely to be willing to go back and fix it. So now if I look at the plane of the leg, leg sort of slants back. So actually I'm gonna push the knee here and that lets the knee come forward like that. All right, so you guys see this plane? I just cut that plane and now I'm going to try to cut a plane for the foot. I mean, the foot is pretty straight down, so I'm going to just cut it up like that. So actually, in the beginning, the sculpture looks pretty geometric because you have to get those planes in there. I mean, I know this is like a lot, but I'm having fun. <laughs> like, I sort of need to do something caveman-like. <laughs> Especially after trying Kathy Speranza's technique, which is so like beautiful and sensitive. I'm like, dude, I need to do something just really primitive right now. Okay, let's go to the back view and see if I can get, I'm trying to get more of this plane going on in there. Marie is asking, are you going to burn, I'm assuming fire, the sculpture, and how? I will not, because this is plastiline. And plastiline, it's not a permanent clay. I mean, it can stay this way. Like, I could keep it here for 50 years, and it will never dry out because it's oil-based. But the idea is if you sculpt with plastiline and you want it to be permanent, you would have to cast it either a silicone mold or a waste mold. I mean, usually for plastiline, I would do silicone, but for something like this, where I'm not worried about the final product, I'm just gonna leave it like this and I'll just take it apart later and maybe make new pieces out of it. So it's really good as a practice clay, if you just wanna sculpt and have fun. But if I was doing something that I really wanted to like cast, it, it would be a completely different story because ugh, the materials get so confusing after a while. Okay, let's do some more. Uh, hmm. Let's see, I'm just squinting. I'm trying to look at the overview. I guess maybe more cutting. 
this. So I really want to get that plain. I mean, here's another funny thing. When I sculpt, I actually find it easier for the figure to be thinner. It's a little straight. Like, it's almost like if you bulk up the figure too much in the beginning, there's too much form to manage. But it's actually easier to let it be thinner and then go from there. That just could just be my personal bias. But I have noticed that I do better with sculpture when I have less clay. It's, it's a little weird. I don't know. I think it sort of depends on your approach. I don't know. Maybe it's the ours to me who likes Giacometti. <laughs> maybe I just enjoy that. OK, let's do the front. Because I only have one leg, <laughs> and that is not going to, that's really not going to work so well. I'm going to move over here so you guys can see a little bit better. It's just, oh, I need my <clears throat> hair dryer. Let's get that going. And this is all pinching, typically. That's what you end up looking at. I mean, as far as poses go, this is a pretty straightforward pose. It's symmetrical. So it's a good pose if you're not super experienced. I mean, ideally, I think for a lot of people, it's best to start with a sculpture that's like a standing pose because you can like see the anatomy a little bit better, but especially for a home studio, that, that really does change things. Like once you guys are not in a sculpture studio, you got to work at home, you have all these limitations. It, it does change like what you're capable of doing. Great. I'm trying to beef that up. Let me see what you guys are saying in the chat. Yenju says, I finished my art portfolio based on tutorials you posted. It was really helpful. Wish to see more videos. That's great. I'm so excited to hear that. You know, when you guys tell me that you learned something new that you didn't know about before or that a video got you to think about something differently, it helped you with a grant application or applying to school. It's just the greatest thing. Like I never get enough of that. <laughs> like sometimes I get messages from people. They say, oh, well, I'm sure you've heard this a thousand times. I'm like, tell me, <laughs> don't ever hold back. I love it. I love hearing about how our content influences you guys. It's really just the greatest thing. I mean, that's why I'm here. It makes all that work worth it. Because you guys know when you're <laughs> working on a project, you're just like, Ugh, you're like so mad at the project and you're like cursing at it and it's driving you up the wall. And you're like, why, why am I doing this? <laughs> That's how I felt actually when I was doing the editing for Kathy Speranza's drawing tutorials, driving me crazy because it was just a really, really complicated tutorial. But once I saw the reaction that people had, to that video, I was like, okay, Clara, that was worth it. All the blood, sweat, and tears, that actually really was worth it. So when you guys tell me stuff like that, it's like, okay, good. This, this was worth my time. <laughs> okay. I think I better bulk up the shoulders. Because I want to show that like plain See, this is why if you guys want to learn anatomy, this is the way to do it because you can't do detail right now. Like you cannot go in and try to do one muscle. Like you have to build the mass. So it's a really great exercise for that reason. Yeah, like let's get that. 
neck in. And actually, the head is a lot more straight across. So I'm going to add more form coming across a little bit more egg like. And actually, you know, it's weird. There is like a plane coming up like this, right? Hmm. I guess the, the front of the forehead is like that. Yeah. See, I don't know. I know this looks like a mess, but I sort of love sculpture. <laughs> it looks like a mess. I don't know. It's like it's like very primitive and satisfying <laughs> for that reason. <laughs> okay. Let's see. We had some questions about the process. Indigo rodent says, how do people cast plastiline? Do they freeze it or something? No, what you do is you would get silicone rubber, which is a mixture. It has like a chemical reaction. So there's like two parts and you mix it together and then you, you make like something called a mother mold, which is a plaster mold that goes around the figure and then you pour in the silicone, it's liquid, and then it sets up inside the mother mold and then you take it apart and then you pour some, it's so complicated, you guys. I've done it several times and it's stressful. Like when I do a silicone mold, I am like walking on eggshells because anything can go wrong. Your mother mold, maybe it doesn't fit well, maybe the silicone there's a leak and it that that's the worst actually when you pour it and then you notice oh my god there's a leak coming out that's really really stressful i've also seen people ruin their sculpture because they weren't thinking about it and so it's stressful that that's why i don't really recommend it to people unless you have somebody like right there holding you through it i've done waste molds with students and it was so stressful it was a crazy amount of work. And, you know, of course people are gonna make mistakes, which is fine, but when you're trying to teach a class, it's really, really hard. Weeping Dog says, is there any big no-no for types of rooms not suited for clay work? The major thing with ceramic clay is dust. That's the problem. So if you take ceramic clay and you have it at home, inevitably you're gonna get dust everywhere and the dust can be really bad for you. So that's why plastiline is good. There's no dust, it's never drying out. So I just, I would never use ceramic clay at home. I think that would be really, really bad. Bit Maskable says, I'm making the calves separately, then attaching them, is that weird? It's whatever you want it to be. I mean, Bit Maskable, if that works for you, do it. My feeling is that if you make them separately, you're not seeing how they relate to the rest of the figure. And so much of the issue with proportions in the figure is that people work on things separately and then put them together and then they don't fit. So that's why you'll notice like I'm doing the whole thing. Like even the legs, see this? These are the two legs. I haven't even separated them yet. They're just a mass right now. And so you have to keep things fairly simple for a short period of time. Vanessa says there is something divine about making little persons out of clay. Who knows? Oh yeah, it's like playing God. <laughs> it totally is. I mean, I don't know. There, there's something really, really primal about this experience that I, I just love it. I think it's amazing. Okay, let me come back to the front view and see what I can get done from there. Oh, you know what I really need? Okay, I really need to show the mass, the, the width of the shoulders is not even close. Man, that's the other thing is when you sculpt, you start to realize like, wow, shoulders are wide. Like, like even on someone who's fairly thin, like you sort of can't believe how wide certain things are until you've actually had to make them in 3D. Like even here, if some of you guys have been following the anatomy series, like these are the trapezius, okay? So you see them coming down. And then here is about where the deltoid muscle is. It, you can see I'm still not putting the arms in because the arms, until I have the 
legs and the head a little bit more solid. It's, it's almost not worth putting in the arms just yet. I mean, I will pretty soon, but right now I'm still doing a lot of work with the legs. And actually, I need to cut these legs. So let me show you guys how that works. Because these legs, they actually come in. And actually, they, yeah, a lot of cutting in the beginning. So the legs come in and then they go out. So we have this plane, this plane, and that plane, okay? And that then shows better angle. So what's going on? I'll show you guys really soon what that looks like. I think next time I'll put the camera on my angle so you guys can see a little bit better. I didn't realize that. This is a totally different setup because you guys have to see it from the side. I couldn't set up my camera the way I usually do overhead. So that this is an experiment. <laughs> For that reason, I was like, hey, this is really different, but good. I mean, I'm always trying to troubleshoot ways to make the view better for you guys so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, more cutting. It's very satisfying. And I will do this. I'm just gonna mark. I'm not going to sculpt it just yet, but I'll just show you guys what I'm doing. Okay, so do you guys see this? What I did with the legs, okay? I didn't sculpt it, but just like down the middle, I just cut a division just as a marking, just to tell myself, okay, that's where they're going to divide. have not done it yet, but definitely for sure. And then another thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go to the back view now, and I'm going to bulk up this because definitely a lot of this is getting a little sunken in. And center line time. I think a little bit more clay just to even this out. But your center line is your guiding light. It's your compass when you guys are sculpting. And if you don't have it, especially with the back, it's really, really hard. So I'm going to do the same thing here. I'll just make a cut and then show you guys on the other side. Okay, so does everybody see this? So I have a cut down the middle, and this is the center line on the back. And then we have the cut down the middle to show the front of the legs. <laughs> Debbie C says, you are Prometheus. <laughs> well, I don't know how I feel, Debbie C, about the whole eagle coming to eat my liver every day and having it grow back so they can come back and torture me. I, I'd like to skip that part of it. The stealing fire from the gods, okay, I can be on board with that because, you know, if I'm a primitive mortal in ancient Greece, I probably want to not be freezing to death. But yeah, the eagle part, not so cool, guys. <laughs> Naftali says, can air dry clay produce dust? It depends on the type. There are some types of clay that are pretty dusty, but I was using this clay from this company called Clayhouse Art. And you can see it in the figure sculpture tutorial that we have, also the portrait sculpture tutorial. I use their terracotta air dry clay. The only issue with air dry clay is if you're not a really experienced sculptor, it can be really hard to do because you are working under a time circumstance because you do feel at a certain point like oh the clay is starting to get hard it doesn't like harden immediately but you can feel parts of it like starting to resist so that's the only issue i mean if you're a beginner and you don't have a lot of experience use this use the plastic this is much much more convenient it's a lot more forgiving you guys won't have to worry about all that stuff okay now what i want to do <clears throat> is i want to show the division of the pedestal and the figure. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna cut in here. I, I love doing stuff like this. These are called undercuts in sculpture and they just feel good. <laughs> just cutting things just feels good. Okay, so you guys can see now, now you can see that division of the figure, okay? All right, I'm gonna look at the front because I wanna look at how the torso functions although the legs are really large maybe i need to like cut in on the hips here yeah because i feel like the torso 
it's a little bit too trunk like so i'm trying to give it a little bit more form like that okay, it's starting to get there cool Karen says, I'm not sure me playing God is a good thing, given my sculpture at the moment. I love that. <laughs> Victor says, my sculpture looks like a fetus. Well, you guys, you've got to start somewhere, okay? Especially with sculpture. It just looks terrible for such a long time. So you, you really have to give yourself 10 times the patience that you typically would get with drawing. Vanessa says, I had to do major surgery because I made his thighs and his torso the same thing. Yep, <laughs> that definitely happens. Demini says, what is the difference between normal clay, which kids use, and this clay? I don't know if you're talking about ceramic clay, clay that goes in a kiln that has to be fired, but this clay never dries out. So you, you can just let it sit here and it will always stay soft. And that's what's so nice about it because if you use ceramic clay, it's such a hassle. You have to like cover it. You got to spray it. And in fact, when I was in grad school and we were making very large scale figures, you had to wet sheets of flannel and wrap your sculpture in the wet flannel and then wrap that in plastic. And oh my God, you guys, it's such a headache. So like just this, not having to deal with that is awesome. <laughs> Oh, Min Woo says, Post Space has 24 different views of nude models and also soft lighting. Cool. I will definitely check that out. I mean, my dream is to make the art prof version because we're better. <laughs> you know, I just want the art prof version. <laughs> Adrian says, I've done sculpture in Minecraft before. It's like a completely different process. You, you you guys, you are the Minecraft generation. That's my kids. My kids are really into Minecraft. They're, they still are. I mean, they were into it when they were kids and they're like tweens now and they're still into it. And Holda says, sculpting has been an absolute breakout skill I've learned in the past year. That's great. I think everybody should sculpt. It's incredibly satisfying. Okay. I need to get... Yeah, my, my legs are so, come around this side so you guys can see better. Look at this. Still trying to keep it real. Hmm. I think I gotta cut this way. It's tricky working from a photo. It's definitely not my preference, but of course, if you want to do figure sculpture, you don't have a lot of options. I mean, how many people have a model at their beck and call? I mean, my dream was always to have my own studio. And honestly, you guys, I'm 45 and I really thought I would have had a studio by now. And I don't. I mean, I work at home and I'm lucky that I have that space. It's better than nothing. But I'm so jealous of people that have like bona fide artist studios. You know, those people, I just, I'm so jealous of them. Okay, so do you guys see this plane that I just cut? And then more squinting, trying to keep it real simple. Okay, I think I gotta come back to the front. It's a lot of jumping around. Like you, you can't sculpt one side for too long, at least in the beginning. Later on, you can definitely hone in more. But at least in the beginning, it's not something that's easy to do. So that's the plane of the feet. Get a side view. Okay, so I'm gonna try to show, let's see. And then I should build up the heels of the feet. Oh, and the knees. Yeah, the knees are like not there. Knees are tricky. I mean, I feel like I might need to do a whole anatomy stream just on knees. 
because they're way more substantial than people realize. A lot of people don't know how much bulk is up there. It's really remarkable. See, like, even though my sculpture looks so blobby, I, I just, I love clay. It, it looks so cool. Like, as it, blobby as it is, it's still really fun to look at. All right, coming back to the back. Sometimes I feel like half the tutorials are just me squinting and making funny faces. But a big part of being an artist is learning to look, knowing how to see. OK, so I just cut this plane. It's more severe than I think it should be, but that's OK. I think. That's better than underestimating things. Like I think with sculpture, the more extreme and severe you are about showing the planes, like this is ridiculously angled. That's not really like the figure in the photo, but it, it shows me like, okay, what is really the direction of what's happening here? God. Yeah. Because I do think that for a lot of people, the main issue with sculpture is that stuff just gets really mushy really fast. And when you have that mushiness, it, it's really hard to show the angles and the structure of the figure. So what I'm doing now, I'm just building up a lot of the thigh because the thigh is a little bit lost. It's clay that never made it in there in these gaps. I'll tell you, this feels great. <laughs> like after doing that drawing, I mean, like I love Kathy's drawings, but after I, I was like, dude, I can't draw like this. <laughs> this is so slow. This takes so much patience. I'm like, I can't do it like this. <laughs> but it's good. I mean, it's good for you guys to step outside of what you normally do and try something different. It, it really gets you to appreciate things. Okay. Okay, it's getting there. I, need, I think I squished it too much. Did I? Yeah. I think, oh, that is, oh, no, 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 guys, I lost my external oblique. This, that's my external oblique. It's gone. Let's put it back. So yeah, I mean, there was that angle. I made it way too dramatic. But maybe what I'll do, I'll just shave down that part of the back. Sorry, I'm like moving around. i do that. Pull off a little bit more. Elizabeth says, I've loved having a studio in my home. Previous to my current home, I had dedicated studios. I missed the space that I could arrange it to my needs and lighting artificially and naturally. Yeah, and the thing is, like, I have an office, which is great. But the thing is, it gets used for other things, too. And I don't know that I've ever had a space that is just for my work 100%. There's other parts of this office. We use it for different things. And so... It is my space, but it doesn't feel like a dedicated studio space. I mean, I, I'm lucky to have even an office. So don't, don't get me wrong. I am not complaining about that. But I don't know. That it was always my dream is that I would like have an artist studio space, but I don't know. Indigo says, why build a sculpture from bits like this? Does it help with the mushiness? It's just, it's a lot easier to move things around. So for example, if I have a big hunk of clay like this, like this is so not malleable. Like if I try to do something with this, here, I'll show you guys. It, it's just horrible. Like this is a real pain. Like this, I can like pinch and squeeze. It's very flexible and it's easy to cut. Like if I try to cut this thing, it's like I can, but it's so solid that it's difficult to make like a very bold cut like this I can really just like slice it down and I want to be able to be very assertive about my cuts if I don't do that then you you get into like the mushiness 
that can start to happen in your sculpture that I find very distracting. Okay, let's go back to this side view. Oh, I, I think I don't have enough torso. Okay, you guys ready? This is gonna look really gross. <laughs> look at this, okay. We're gonna like cut in the middle. <laughs> and we're gonna do this, we're gonna like pull it apart. Hang on. Okay, there needs to be more. Okay, we need more space in between here. This is this is surgery, you guys. <laughs> I mean, this would not be pretty. We're gonna pull. I think I need a bigger head. Is that what it is? Yeah, because there's no like I didn't put in the jaw. Yeah, there's no jawbone. I mean, th this is the problem with a pose like this is it is very like enclosed. So it is hard for that reason. Like if you have a standing figure, everything's so obvious. Here, there are actually parts of the face that are a little bit hidden. So that doesn't make it easy, but it's a beautiful pose. And I love this pose. Ugh, God, ew, gross. You know what this is? Do you, do you guys see this? It's like screeny crap. This is silicone, which is <laughs> left over from old molds that I've done in the past. Okay, so now we're gonna, <laughs> this is starting to get gross looking. Okay, right? Oh wait, but that's, <sighs> I think I gotta bulk up in here. I think I just, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I do not have enough chest. We're missing our pectoralis major. I just gotta beef up this whole middle section that's going on in here. And just so you guys know, I will definitely do a second stream on this. I'm probably just gonna get the forms in place today and then we'll have another stream so we can figure out how to do more details. Oh, I need to cut way down. Okay. So like on this side, you guys can see, I just cut that out, pulling that back on the eyes. I think my, is it the thighs? I think the thighs are too thick at the top. I think they need to, because the thing about thighs that you have to remember is that they're thicker towards the waist and then towards the knee, they get thinner. And so that is a good proportional idea to be thinking about. Yeah, and I think I lost the, did I lose my neck again? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I keep losing body parts. <laughs> okay. I think that's better. The head might be a little bit too large, but you know what? It's easy to get rid of that later on. So I'm not worried about it. I do want to show the plane of the forehead though. And then there's another plane this way. Plane of the neck coming that way. Better. I still I think the back is not substantial enough still because the thing is like you can build the torso in here but I actually might want to pull it out which might give me more flexibility in this negative space let's see yeah I mean, this is such a good lesson as far as like not going for the details because you just can't, it's not possible to try to do details. And if you do, you just end up looking ridiculous. All right. I lost my center line. Let's put the center line back. Oh, see, this is the problem when you reuse plastiline. You see this crap? You guys see this? It's like gum. It's, it's, ugh, it's a silicone goop ugh, that's in my old plastiline. Gross. 
Guys, being an artist is just not that pretty sometimes. Actually, most of the time. <laughs> All that romance stuff, uh-uh. None of it's true. Okay, I might... See, I'm not so sure I want to get the arms in just yet because it might get in the way. Basil says, this is an accurate representation of my knee surgery. Oh, you poor thing. I know I've known a couple people that have had knee surgery and I mean, any surgery is stressful, but I hope it went well for you, Basil. Sketch Paws says, can I sculpt with a kneaded eraser since it does harden? You can, I mean, you can sculpt with anything. I mean, basically, if you think it's gonna help you, go ahead. I have seen at the art store, they have these tools that are, they're sort of like this, but the top part is like rubber. And so there is a little bit of resistance. I've never used them. I tend to like tools that are a little bit stiffer, but I mean, that's a personal taste thing. You guys, I have silicone rubber all over my fingers. This is disgusting. Look at this, ew. Oh, this is what I get for like not cleaning my plastiline well. Lana Banana says, why are the likes and dislikes disabled? I'm not sure. I mean, I didn't change anything. I'm not sure, but it could be that maybe you can't do that while the video is live. You might have to do it later. I'm not totally sure about that. Okay. Going back to the side view. More squinting. Oh, I need to pull the legs out. It needs to be more straight. Yeah, because actually the negative space in here, it's more significant than I made it. So I think I better go in and carve out some of that space. That. Negative space is tricky. You really need it, though in sculpture. You can see what a difference that makes to like open up that area. It's like, I don't know, I think negative space, it, it helps your sculpture breathe. It makes your sculpture more alive in a way, because I do think sometimes the form, it starts to get very dense. And so that's why that negative space is hugely helpful for that. Yeah, that really helps. Although now I've lost the angle of this leg. I'll go back in and cut that down again. Oh, and I should really differentiate the feet. Oh my God, my feet are like flat. Shoot. <laughs> I need to really fix that. Okay, the feet are more like this. And they, I, I do need to show like the separation between the feet and like, see the bottom of the pedestal, like even this area under here, I consider that to be negative space. It's an area underneath the feet. I need to show that better. Try the other side. Yeah. I was totally missing that space. Underneath. Okay, so it doesn't look great, but at the very least now I have negative space down here at the bottom. And that is handy. I should differentiate the legs. Desenia says, you are talking about not cleaning the plastiline good enough after making a mold, but how should you clean it? It's not so much that you have to clean it, but at least with the silicone rubber that I used, I thought I had a piece of it here. The silicone rubber that I was using a long ways back, it was just like pink sticky rubbery stuff. And you either have to like cut it off or pull it off I mean, this is sticky. Like, I don't know what this is from. I think this is from like silicone that didn't set. <laughs> it's like really, 
really gross. <laughs> so oftentimes I don't clean it as much as I just shave off the pieces that have crap on them. And I'm just lazy and never do that. Speaker says, I've had issues drawing, have heard sculpting can help with the particular issue I'm having. As a beginner, what would you recommend for sculpting, tools and clay? I would get the plastiline that I have. That, that's the best thing because you don't have to worry about the dry time or anything. Tools, this is a really good knife. This is called a fettling knife. I mean, a lot of the tools that I have are for ceramics. And so what you could do is a lot of places, they sell like a ceramics tool kit. So it gives you, for example, you might get the fettling knife. I think a lot of them have these like plastic or wooden tools. These loop tools are really nice to have because then you can go in and just carve like that. But honestly, there's no right way to get tools. And you can see right now, I'm not even using tools. I'm just using my hands. So my feeling is that it doesn't have to be that specific or structured. But I think the important thing is the clay. Like if you have this type of clay, this will make your life a lot easier as a beginner. So Elizabeth says, usually Sculpey and Fimo, there's lots of tools. Yeah, I mean, Sculpey and Fimo is hard to work with. For this type of sculpture, Sculpey and Fimo is not great because it's just, it doesn't have the, the beef that this clay has. Sculpey and Fimo, they're a little bit sloppy. I mean, the advantage is that you can bake them, but the thing is like something this big, you wouldn't want to bake this. I don't think it would work out so well. So that would be very tricky. Okay. I still am not happy with the torso. I think I need to bend it. Let's do that again. <laughs> this feels gross. <laughs> Poor guy. Yeah, you know what it is? I, I think I'm underestimating it. I think I'm making it too safe. Is that the word I'm trying to say? Like, I, I feel like I'm underestimating the gesture. Like the gesture is more dramatic than I think it is. Wait. Oh, da -da -da. my knees are too high. All right, here we go. Goodbye, knees. <laughs> That's really gross looking. Yuck. Does that help? You see, this is where like you have to look at the scale relationships. And like somebody had asked earlier about like making the calves separately. It's like, you guys see, I just cut off <laughs> the top of the knees. And if I had made the calves separately, that would have been really hard to deal with. Just cut this way. Yeah, these, these legs were way too big. That, that's what it was. The torso was too small. But what ended up helping me was making the knees smaller. They're even smaller than that. How did I miss that, you guys? It's like right now, this is the time to be making these proportional changes. Like you don't want to do this later on. And so that's why I advocate just really trying to keep the sculpture very loose. Because I, I just cut off like half an inch of the knees. <laughs> Basil, hopefully that's not what you're surgery was like. Okay, I gotta twist around to the other side. Yeah, and then, oh my god, I, I made the legs so gigantic. Why did I do that? They were like majorly bulked up. Okay, and then I think I should remove some of the negative space. Still too high? Do I still need to get rid of the knees? <laughs> let, let me bulk up the bottom of the torso. That that might help, but I still feel like the legs might be too big. See, like in sculpture, it takes a while. Like you gotta work out all this proportional stuff. Like there's no point in articulating a specific muscle if you're like hacking off the top of the knees. This is really fun though. Like I, I just love this. <laughs> this is really, really fun. More off the back. Up at that 
clean a little bit better. And then here, I'm going to like really cut in on the side. Because you know what, you guys, I would rather over exaggerate this pose than get it correct. To me, it's not fun if it's too much about the accuracy. So that's why I'm like really trying to push some of these angles. I think the leg is still too high. Let, let's, let's just keep hacking off the knee until we decided that it's enough. <laughs> oh my God, now it's starting to look really wonky. <laughs> All right, it's getting there. Now the feet are too. See, it's like with sculpture, you fix one thing, you got to fix eight other things. Because now that I have cut back on the knees so much, the feet are way too big. So let's let's chop off the toes. Awesome. <laughs> it's so gross. This makes me think of that Roll Doll book, The Witches. You know how he talks in the book about how the witches have no toes? <laughs> that's exactly what this is. Oh, that's so much better. It was totally the legs. The legs were way too long. So the reason I saw that is because I compared the head to the knee and there's all that space and actually now I'm seeing there's more head back here. So let's put that on. Okay, and I think still more back here to really accentuate the curve and how much the back pulls out. Yeah, still a long ways to go. But I'm really glad I fixed that knee. Oh man, that was like a major issue. Even now. See, it's like I didn't even divide the legs because I knew it wasn't really worth it. And look at how much I've cut back. Like if I had actually bothered to do that, it would not have been worth my time to do that. Elizabeth is saying, yes, different brands of polymer clay are different stiffness. Also to make something larger, one would have to bake in stages. There's a cool product called paper clay to make an armature but don't try to sculpt in paper clay, it's too soft. I tried paper clay and it's a mess. It has no strength as a clay. It's really, really, I don't know, it just has no substance to it. it it's good if you wanna like cosmetically adjust something. Like I had this professor who was making these cardboard sculptures and he would put paper clay to make a form like a little bit bigger or something like that, but he never sculpted with it. So I feel like paper clay is good for that, but for something like this, no, that would not work at all. Jayesh says, how to exercise this sculpture and how many times? I'm not sure what you mean by exercise, Jayesh. So if you wanna go in and maybe explain a little bit better, I'm happy to answer your question. Basil says, this reminds me of the original Cinderella where the stepsisters cut their feet to fit into the class slipper. I know, like, it's so funny because at least in America, there's all these very sanitized Disney versions. And then you read the original and you're like, wow, that that's hardcore. I mean, I think it's more interesting. But <laughs> sort of like Shakespeare, which everybody dies in the end. It's just, it's not fun if nobody dies. Actually, you know what's funny? My daughter, I think in fourth grade, she wrote the story about an earthquake. And she wrote in the story that the whole family died. She said it was a family of four. And within the first paragraph, they were all dead because there was an earthquake. And I can't believe this, but her teacher said to her, well, could we just have two people die instead of all four? And I was like, it's an earthquake. <laughs> like, I don't know. Like, I, I think the teacher thought that was too too depressing 
to have the story be about a whole family dying. But I was like, you know, what? that's actually more realistic than just saying, oh, well, that's too depressing. Let's just, I don't know, that, that sort of bothered me that the teacher wanted to change the story because she thought it was too depressing. And I was like, but that's real. That like that's a real story. That that really bothered me. I mean, I get it, but it's like that's what my daughter wanted her story to be about, and I thought that was really cool. Hmm. You know what I sort of want to do, you guys? Tell me in the chat if you think I should do this. Okay, so do you guys see how this is the figure and how it's symmetrical? I sort of want to do this. I sort of want to do that. Do you guys think I should do that? I know that's a departure from the photo reference, but I sort of like that twist, right? Like if I do it even more, I mean, actually, that reminds me a lot. There's a Rodin piece of a woman who's in a similar position, like she's very twisty, but I sort of like it like that. I don't know. Should I do it? Even though it's not the photo reference? Tell me in the chat, or should I just go with the photo reference because it's more reliable and I'll know better what I'm doing? It is just a reference, though. So I don't know why I have to stay with it because I kind of like that pose better. I mean, that does mean I'll have to make stuff up, but I'm not too upset about that because I do think I have enough anatomy knowledge to be able to wing it on the sections I need to. And ultimately this, this sculpture is not about reproducing the Robert Maplethorpe piece. It's, it's about ultimately it's about what I want to do and it is just a reference. So what I'm doing right now, I just cut the two legs like this. So now you can actually see how they're different. Cool, yeah. Bit Maskable says, yes, do it, it's cool. Liz Brenman says, yes, Basil likes to twist. Dysania says, it looks cool, but I can't physically do that. Oh, no, I can't either. <laughs> I am like the least flexible person. Maybe if you're like Simone Biles, <laughs> you could definitely do that. Christoph says, do it. Cool. I'm so glad that you guys are getting me to try new things. Awesome. Angie says, Maplethorpe would approve. <laughs> Yuki says, I find it more dramatic and emotional like this. Awesome. Let's do it, guys. Oh, I'm so excited. Thank you so much for helping me. I'll tell you guys, I, I just love making stuff with all of you guys around because it gets lonely to sit in a studio and do stuff by yourself. Do you, what do you guys think? I mean, I think that might maybe why a lot of people like sculpting or painting with us during our streams because you, you just don't feel as alone. As artists, you know, we spend a lot of time alone <laughs> in rooms just like doing things. Oh yeah, I like that way more, guys. And you know what we're gonna do is once we finish for today, I'm gonna take a look at some sculptures as reference to help me with this because there is a Rodin sculpture. It's somewhat similar. I mean, it's different because it's carved out of marble. So it's a really different material, but the pose is somewhat similar and that's what I'm interested in. Okay, what we do need to do though, is show the center line, okay? So that's, the center line is now, it's twisted now. It wasn't like that before. Before I did this, it was more straight. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make the center line a little bit more sculptural. I mean, before I was just sort of drawing it in, but now I'm gonna really dig in and see. Okay, so do you guys see that? So now the center line, let me draw it again so I can. Oh, but that, now, now I wanna mess with the legs. Okay, you know what I wanna do? I'm gonna move this leg down. So this is what I'm gonna do. 
I'm going to cut off <laughs> again the top of the knee. <laughs> I'm going to do this. I think this will just be more fun. And I'm going to put this foot, I'm going to move this foot all the way down so it's like actually on the base. Like that. Okay, so now that this leg, I have to move the ankle because now the ankle should be down here. So again, I, I know this is not going to be accurate, but who cares? See. I, don't, I don't know if I'm going to pull this off, but let's just try it. A lot of times people ask me in the Discord or wherever, they're like, well, should I? And I'm like, try it. <laughs> like, it doesn't hurt. And if you're not sure, do it on a scrap piece of paper. Okay, so of course that means the bum has to come down like this. Oh, somebody taught me on YouTube. They're like, well, if, if, if we're talking about Hugh Jackman's butt in Australia, it's a bum. I didn't know that because in America, we don't say bum, we say butt. I was like, wow, that's a really specific cultural difference that I was, I was not aware of. <laughs> So now I know. If I want to talk about Hugh Jackman's bum, I have to say bum. I can't say Hugh Jackman's butt. These are important realizations that I need to make. Adjustments. Okay, so does everybody see that? I just off-centered the leg, so one is taller than the other. And you know what? I am going to do this pose so that you cannot do it. Like, I, I, I just twisted the head. Looks a little painful now, but uh, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe that's a good thing. Who knows? <laughs> this is so funny from That Is Art. Do what you think we wouldn't want, then it will be how we want it. My experience. That sounds like working with clients where it's just oh, total guessing game. Dysenia says, if your clay collapses, you may need an armature. I probably won't because usually with an armature, you need something like, like if I have an arm, this is going to look weird. Like if I had an arm that was stretching out like that, yes, for sure. But because a lot of these limbs are attached to each other, because the head is actually attached to the, the leg. I don't think it's going to be an issue. And it's pretty stiff. So I'm, I'm touching it right now. I don't feel any structural issues. But yeah, I mean, that can be a problem sometimes. That's why I'm keeping it so small. So I don't have to worry about the armature. Vanessa says, my sculpture looks horrible. But it's a nice bum. You know, priorities. <laughs> as long as you have a nice bum, nothing else matters. <laughs> Bit Maskable says, you said it wasn't worth it to separate the legs earlier. You've talked previously about drawing efficiently, but now I'm comparing that to Speranza's process, which is very iterative. Oh, it's so different. I mean, Kathy and I, we are opposite ends of the spectrum. And I think the important thing is to see that range, like look at what I do, look at what she does, look at what other people on the art prof staff do and see what works for you. That's the most important thing. So. Anything you guys learn from any teacher, you take it with a grain of salt because not all of that is going to work for you necessarily. Bit Maskable says, so would it be worthwhile if there, if it was there to help get other parts of the drawing and sculpture correct? Please help me reconcile these things. Well, it's hard to say because I think the process is not very linear because I went into the sculpture thinking, okay, I have these Maplethorpe references. I'm going to do these images. And I didn't know I was gonna do this pose. I, I just, <laughs> that was a last minute decision that I just made a few minutes ago. And that's okay for your process to be a little bit all over the place. So much of this is trial and error, you guys. A lot of it, you just cannot predict. 
So it's frustrating because when people ask me questions like that, I wish I could give you a very concrete answer and say, yes, if you do this, this will happen. But it just doesn't work that way. It's just so unpredictable. All right, guys, I will be hanging out in the Art Prof Discord. I will be in the Art Alongs channel. The Discord invite is in the YouTube video description below. Subscribe to our channel so you can continue to grow and develop as an artist. And I want to give a big thank you to our top Patreon supporters for contributing and helping us keep Art Prof up and running and making sure that Art Prof is always 100% free and accessible to everybody. You guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.